Hi guys, welcome to the short video about the question what I recommend to do after you have bought a new computer monitor, especially for Windows 11. Most people don't do a lot after they replace an old monitor. Sometimes, of course, old monitors break or people want to have a larger one. That's usually the motivation for a new monitor. And so what most people are doing, they just replace the monitor one by one. They are even using their old monitor cable and they just continue working. But there is so much more which you can do to optimize the new experience because usually new monitors have much better capabilities. So let's start this here. Usually these days we have two choices either to connect it with HDMI cable or with DP means display port. As far as I know, display port is a little bit a uh, newer technology. And so it's also usually a little bit better, faster, has more possibilities. So if your graphics card has a DP port and your new monitor has also a DP port, then I highly recommend to use a display port cable. Then of course, very important to optimize the display settings when you are on your desktop on Windows 10, Windows 11. Then you right click here and click on display settings. The most important thing, of course, is the display resolution. Usually when you connect a new monitor, then it switches automatically to the highest resolution. And of course, this is usually recommended. Also, Windows says it's recommended and usually this doesn't consume a lot of additional GPU power on its own as long as you're not doing crazy gaming or so. Of course, if you are using a higher resolution, then maybe you consider to use the scaling function to have the same appearance on the screen again. So for me, going up from 1080p to 1440p, 125 percent works absolutely perfect, even though Windows is saying 100 percent is recommended. But then everything is super, super small. I have a hard time to read everything properly. So I go with the 125 percent. And of course, I keep the landscape. Of course, if your old monitor still works, you can use it as a second display. Then you can arrange it here in the multiple displays setting. And then also something very important, which a lot of people forget to adjust. And also the Windows system is not adjusting that automatically. That's this uh, advanced display setting. We click here and then we can adjust the refresh rate. My new monitor is supporting up to 170 Hertz, of course, only with DP, not with HDMI. But you can see I can use it now 170 Hertz. These are the most important things here at the moment. And then on top of that, you have the settings on your monitor. That's usually a button at the bottom on the right side or even in the back of the monitor. That's usually a button which you can push and then you have a lot of menu settings. You can adjust the brightness, the contrast and much, much more. Of course, most monitors come already with a very good default setting. But of course, it's also personal preference. And especially for me, most of the default settings are way too bright. So I'm usually turning down the brightness a lot and also reducing the blue light in the RGB setting. Unfortunately, of course, I can't record that even though I see it on my screen. You can't see that. I can't record it for you because it's just on the monitor. It's actually not on the window screen itself. And then there's something which I would say 99% of the people are not aware of that this is existing or built in into the Windows system. And that's the calibration system for the monitor. So what you have to do, you hit the Windows key and then type calibrate. And after that, you should see this calibrate display call. You click on that and then Windows will guide you through the whole thing. I click here. You can see, for example, first thing is the gamma correction. It should look like that. So we shouldn't see these bullets in the center. For example, we click on next. Now you can see there are almost no bullets to see. But when I slide a little bit down, you can see these bullets. When I slide up, also dark bullets. So we have to adjust it somewhere in the middle 
that we can't see these bullets. So that's probably around here. Let me click on next. And there are many, many more things here for the brightness, detail, then about the contrast, then about the color balance and so on and so on. And then of course, I would say it's a good moment to update the display drivers, depending on what you have. If you have an AMD, for example, Radeon Ryzen, then you go to amd.com and their support page and then you can download your drivers. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a page where they are trying to identify what your graphics card is. I've seen that before, but I couldn't find it anymore. So, pro so it looks like at the moment we really have to decide what we have and then choose the right thing and then download it. A similar thing with the Intel. If you have an Intel CPU, GPU, then you can download here the latest drivers. Of course, most monitors work already pretty good with normal standard Windows drivers, but there's always a possibility that you can get out a little bit more when you have the latest drivers. So I think I have now covered most of it. Of course, there are some special features for some specific monitors. Also something to consider, of course, that some monitors have their audio like speakers built in and some have not. So if you have upgraded to one with speakers, you can remove maybe your old external speakers or if you have replaced a monitor with included speakers with a monitor without speakers then maybe it's time to consider looking for a decent external speaker system but i would say that's pretty much it this should be the most important things if you think i've missed one of the big topics then just let me know other than that i hope i've been able to help you a little bit with this video if you have any questions or comments just write to the comment section below and i'm always happy to talk about these things and if you like the video give me a thumbs up subscribe my channel thanks for watching see you next time